This is a piece of red maple. It was actually a piece of firewood. And what we did was, as you can see, we roughed it with the bandsaw um, to this shape. Because, yeah, my other one, if you saw it, um, was out of a burl. And, you know, it was a more traditional style. You wear it on your uh, belt or your pack or, or whatever. And, you know, you got to drink water and put it back. Well, this is more of a uh, style you see more of these days. Where it has a flat bottom and, you know, it's like a coffee cup. But as I said, we, we roughed it out with the uh, uh, bandsaw in this, this shape. It's still pretty pretty rough but and then I did press through I uh, cheated and used the drill press um, just because I wanted it to come out you know I wanted wanted it to come out good or at least more comfortable so <clears throat> but basically now I'm just in the beginning stages of uh, hollowing out the inside as you can see and uh, basically I don't really have a lot of I mean, I have a lot of tools, but not a lot of, compared to some people, but these are the two more knives that I like to use, these two here. They both have different um, qualities, like this one's sharpened on both sides. Okay, this is not. And forgive me, I forget the, uh, the actual number, model numbers of these knives, but that's 164, 165, I don't know, but if you look at them, it's pretty obvious which is which. But you can see that has a taper. It's only sharp on one side. Um, and it's good for really getting in there and rooting. And this is sharpened on both sides, but it's, as you can see, it's a lot wider. And as the projects get bigger, this comes in handy. And then, you know, I've got my gouges, which I showed you the last time. A couple different sizes. These I just generally use like this, you know, like I explained, just a little bit at a time, like that. And again, when you're using this, bear in mind, you know, don't, don't push. I mean, always, always try to set it up so, you know, you're not putting yourself in harm's way and, you know, take a little bit at a time, like that and you know eventually it gets done a couple other things you know i've got a a straight gouge which is used for few, just a different different techniques but i'm not going to use that today that's pretty much it um a spoon i'm working on actually that was a one by three piece of red maple i roughed out i call it my ogre spoon i haven't decided how how far I'm going to go with this. This thing looks pretty, pretty, uh, kind of cool the way it is, but obviously I got a lot of work to do to it. And, um, kind of excited to see how this mic's going to work. Like I just had cars go by and, you know, before that would be loud. Um, you know, and I got uh, whittling knives. Got this here, this one, you know, for doing this. You know, just whittling, real small stuff. And the other thing I like to use, which is kind of cool, is actually a, um, a farrier's tool. But I've modified it to do wood carving. And this thing is so slick. If you're, you know, if you're doing a spoon or something, um, you, know, you can pull it towards you. And here I am pulling the knife into my chest, but it's an old spoon carving technique. Um, but you can draw it towards you as you're working. And the other thing is I did, I sharpened this um, right here. So this is a, if you're getting in there to dig, it's good at digging out, you know, smoothing surfaces and stuff. So it's basically, it's a Mora. It's a number 180 hoof trimmer, but I've modified it, as I said, to do, you know, do, um, do wood. And uh, this thing is wicked comfortable. You know, to draw. I'm not really taking much off because I'm not sure what I want to do with this. Anyway, that's more or less my tools. So, right now I'm just still using this one. And when you carve these, uh, my friend Brian 
showed me. Think of it as a, you look at your grain, and if your grain's going this way, which in this case it is, like that, what you do is you make a clock, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, I guess 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, if I was on your side. And what you do is you, you start at 12 and you work down to 3 like that, like that. And then you go from 6 to 3 like this like that and the same thing on this side six to nine and then twelve to nine like this and what that does is it works with the green you can see that's about all I get out of there this is a long way to go but what that does is you don't get all jammed you know you don't start chopping into the grain the wrong way and jabbing up the wood and it just keeps things smooth. It's a lot easier in the long run to, um, you can see here, I can even do this, which is pretty cool. This is a really handy tool. If you're going to get into carving spoons and cups or bowls, definitely recommend this. It comes in wicked handy in tight places. Um, you know, I can just get right down in there and just root like that. I'm by no means a professional woodcarver, it's just a hobby. Um, and uh, there's a lot of um, videos out on YouTube that some really good, good, good carvers have show you a lot more tricks or, uh, you know, a lot better products too, actually, because that's what they do. But, you know, um, just I enjoy making my own stuff, whether it's... Um, maple syrup or cuxa cups or musket balls or whatever so anyway you can see this project has a long way to go we'll keep you up to date remember what it looked like now <laughs> pretty rough someday it'll be a cup I don't know if you can hear it, but a flock of geese just flew over. I think they're out of range. I want that to have a real thin, thin rim, uh, all said and done. Not too thin, but probably not much. A little thinner than that right there. Just makes it easier to drink out of. A wide rim cups kind of difficult to drink out of for some people.
The good thing about this knife is it's only sharp on this end, so you can use your finger without cutting yourself. Unlike the other one, you know, I tend to wear holes in my fingers, but you can get right there and just because that it's only sharp on this side. Kind of come that baby right along there. You want to work that rim right down. What I want to do now is kind of shape the, I just want to get my inside line and then I can stay under that and not worry about screwing up the lip of it. So I'm trying to just get my final, um, you know, rim like that. Then I can dig down here without, you know, obviously don't go through the side, but you got to be careful. You can take, you know, you can always take more off, but you can't put wood back on. Well, the sun's going down. Getting hungry. Coming. Actually, I get this almost to where I want it. Still got to get some depth in it. Get out. Well, actually. I'm down to about there. So, all I want to do is try to take a little more out of these bottom edges just to get more capacity. But. Oh, anyway. Hmm. Gonna be a good cup.